member of our crew on the road right now. Another two going tomorrow. And uh, Warchant Report is up on Warchant.com. Myself, Ira, Aslan. It was fun to do. Tom, what you, you got something up right now? I didn't check the site this morning. I know that's, uh, I, I know you, I think you did something on Hamilton. Uh, yes. Well, from the show. Basically, yeah, the Jeff Cameron show. How about that? It was a news story cited from this show's interview yesterday with Coach Hamilton, which you can find everybody on Warchant TV on demand. Uh, but those comments were strong. That was his first on the record response to the Boba Miller suspension. So you, it was noteworthy. You know what I think is funny, Tom? And that's just a good thing that, um, I guess you just, you do something for a long time and you develop relationships and, and you have conversations and sometimes you forget people are listening to them. Like I, I, uh, I really like Leonard Hamilton. And so I, I, I talked to Leonard and I, and I don't go out to dinner, but I, if I see him, if I run into him in the community, we talk. We say hello. He asked me to talk to him, ask him how he's doing. Right. It would not be the case with every single coach at Florida that, that, State. That's, yeah. that's correct. Right. So we do have that kind of a rapport. And it, so when yesterday or the day before, uh, basically they reached out and said, uh, you know, basketball season coming up. When, do, when would you like to have coach on? Because they know I always do. It's a standing invitation on the Jeff Cameron Show for Hamilton to join us. And I know how busy he is when the season gets started and all that stuff. So, and you know, Chuck Walsh, of course, and. So anyway, I, I, you know, he and I were talking and just kind of shooting the breeze. And he said, well, you want Ham on this week or next? And I was like, well, let's, let's get him on. Let's get him out in front. Let's, let's get him on right away. So Chuck doesn't say to me, this is his first appearance since the Boba Miller ruling. This is, he hasn't done any, any interviews or anything like that. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I didn't, I just would have assumed that uh, a lot of people had reached out and it's, it is flattering that he chose this uh, medium, this show to make an official statement. He he knows that it's well listened to. But I still didn't put two and two together that it was going to be the first comments. I just knew I had to ask him because our listeners want to know. And I wanted to know. I wanted to know what he thought. Because Leonard is very thoughtful. He's not rash. He doesn't just say things to say things and then go back and try to clean it up. He doesn't walk things back. He'll wait to respond till he's had time to contemplate the way that he would like to articulate his thoughts and or feelings on a situation. And he also likes to get the information necessary to make an informed decision or comment. So when I asked him the question and he answered, I didn't realize it was the first. And I'm not trying to make too much of this, but here's why it's funny. Because I'm just used to our conversations, it didn't surprise me that he had a thoughtful answer, an interesting answer, and that he, he gave you. It was only hours later last night so I, I'm doing a better job these days of putting the damn phone away. Like when I get home, I'm doing a better job. It's a key it. to mental health. It friend. is. Well, and I'm busier than I've ever been. And the kids are good. They're growing so fast. And I just want to spend quality time when we play basketball together, doing whatever we can. So I learned that if you put this away, you're not tempted to always be checking work stuff or, you know, stupid text threads that don't really even interest, you know, all that stuff. Now. I go to my phone right before I'm going to bed last night, and there's like hundreds of responses and things on here. I'm like, what? Did I screw up? Did I say something crazy? Because I've done that. <laughs> I thought, did I, did I do something to piss people off? So the first thing I thought was, well, which I, whatever, I'll live with that I, as long as it's not egregious. And I was just kind of considering, I didn't realize it was in response to the Leonard Hamilton interview because he's great. And that response, so I had people nationally asking, hey, can we talk to you about that interview? Can we use the sound? People wanted to use the sound. But as far as I understand it, it's out there. Anybody can use the sound. It'd that's be right. nice if you credit me. Well, but I mean, and if they want to use the video, that's why we watermark the video. You know, this, right. That's why we do these things. Uh, but I mean, that's what was funny is I had these texts and, and there were emails from people I've never met before that in other states, like, hey, we would like to use this on KTR, but you know, can we do this? We, we have a basketball guy. Like, Just use it. Oh, no, but it's okay. In some cases, the answer is, for how much? But, yes, I, absolutely. It, it's yeah. out there. It's in a podcast. It's on the interwebs. It's on YouTube. It happens. People, anybody can do it. Yes, you're right. It's nice if they say that was Leonard Hamilton on the Jeff Cameron Show. But that's all you have to do in terms of attribution. So I was very, very surprised. But you know what it tells me? It tells me that people outside the Florida State community 
absolutely understand that this is nonsense, that this is crazy. Like, like you had people who couldn't care less about Florida State saying, making this a talking point. Not me, but the, the, the answer Leonard Hamilton gave to the absurd NCAA ruling because it's an opportunity to once again highlight all the things that are wrong with the NCAA and have been forever. There's just been a long line of absurdities uh, from the NCAA, and this just adds to it. But I think the reason that it, it garnered steam and, and it be, it's a talking point is because the NCAA is in trouble. I mean, they're, they're reeling in the world of NIL. I mean, every day there's another talking point about when is it that the Power Five are going to break away and how many programs, let's say non-revenue programs, are going to survive if this thing fractures and all these talking points. So every time the NCAA does something stupid like that to hurt their credibility yet again, yet again, and it's absurd. Like the, the, the ruling is absurd. It, this is almost universally agreed upon. I don't know who would argue that this isn't an insane ruling. Then it's one more opportunity for talk show hosts and writers and people who cover sports and cover collegiate sports to say, guys, this, this is not going to help your cause. This is the kind of thing that is going to lead to your irrelevance yet, you know, faster. Well, yeah, even though they should have been irrelevant 10 years ago in 15 and 20 with the things that they've done over the decades that just make no sense and have no consistency to them whatsoever. Hopefully we could speed out of that. I would have thought the death knell would be well, uh, after, uh, well, there are many of them, right? But uh, after President Emmert said, y'all figured out yourself to the women's <laughs> basketball tournament, after it was clearly shown on social media what yeah. the different weight room situation was, you figured out, you, this is the one thing that you put on, the basketball tournament. Like, really, the thing that has the the, the brightest lights shown upon it mm -hmm. is the NCAA's presentation really the last thing that they of have March Madness across that. both basketball sports. That's all they have. It's really all they have anymore. You know, you don't have a million people waiting to get tickets to go to carry for the uh, the College Cup. <laughs> as much as I love that program, it's not exactly the NCAA's leading act. There's like 170 people. There. That's right. Uh, and yeah. they all live in Cary. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's correct. So this is the one thing that you need to get right. And you can't even do that. So it's just that's an organization that I can't wait till it's gone. But I. I won't be stunned if it's still here five, ten years from now. Uh, well, the, the problem is, what's the alternative? Who's going to take it over? How's it going to look? Can you get people to agree upon that? I mean, it's, it's... The question is, what will happen first? Will the NCAA die, or will the U be back? It's going to be a close race. Very close race. Mm. I've got picks. I got them right here in my hot little hands. And, you know, it only takes one I'm back, baby, kind of weekends to get arrogant, boastful, cocky, yet again. But I had a big week last week, gang. We were able to overcome some of the previous deficits in my picks, which have been shoddy. This has been a shaky season for yours truly, especially when you're used to greatness, when you're used to consistently being on the winning side for the season, to be sub-500 rolling into last week significantly is hurtful. It hurts me. To my core, I'm here to win. It's not about ego. It's about winning money. But I've been humbled briefly. Uh, but a 19-4 and four week in our other pool and then a 6-3-1 and one week on Redemption Thursday and then a really solid Sunday for me in my personal life. Just uh, it all came back in a hurry. Everybody wants to jump on this bandwagon. You just got to give them a reason. Two weeks in a row and then the whole world, you, you think people are reaching out to you for information and credit for Leonard Hamilton audio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They'll be saying, hey, can we get that Redemption Thursday audio in advance? It just takes two weeks in a row. Two good weeks. Here we go. And they're like, oh, he's back. He went through a slump, but he's back. Because people who are actual gambler, gamblers, who, who, do, who do it consistently, understand we all go through swoons. Is your process right? It'll come back around. Was it steeped in reason? You may have lost that wager, but you were on the right side. It just didn't work out because the game is still played by humans. And it's not your fault that that kid walking into the end zone about to garner a victory somehow fumbled and the ball hit the pylon, and now it's their ball at the 25, and you just lost the bet. That's a son of a gun when that happens. Or if, you know, the third stringer for Tennessee drives 95 <laughs> yards. 
in, for a in touchdown. Several fourth downs were on the long way. Uh, right. Along the way. For touchdowns. Yeah, that was a couple of years ago with the uh, Tennessee and Florida. Wasn't That's it? right. Yeah. That's right. Twice in the fourth quarter with under, I don't know, eight minutes to go, something like that. Well, you bet long enough, you're on the wrong end of some bad beats and some remarkable wins. This is a lean and you year. You learn how to do that. You learn how to, you're, you're having a rough one, a little rough stretch right now. I saw that. I've got a um, a potential if we can close the deal here <laughs> and win a measly seven football games. Everything's going to be right. Oh, season total, huh? Everything is going to be right in the world with just finishing the job. And if we win on Saturday, then that's about it. That's I looked it up today, Tom. Did you know this? I bet you didn't. Well, maybe you did. Maybe I'll say it. And you're like, oh, I did know that. But it wasn't on your mind. So I'll bring it back up. This is fascinating because I thought I remembered seeing it and I didn't bet it. You know, I, I'm mad at myself. You could have this summer, this past summer, you could have had Florida State plus nine against Miami. Plus nine. Plus nine. Wow. That's that's how different things were viewed. Uh how how different in terms of the two teams, how they were viewed it, this offseason. Miami was way up here. Florida State was still perceived way down here. That line, had you bet it preseason sort of game of the year type things, those game of the year, a lot of times these books will release the Ohio State-Michigan game or the Florida State-Florida game or whatever it might be, right? They released Florida State-Miami, Florida State plus nine. That is a three-score difference from the opening line this weekend. Think about that. Um, and it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's fascinating. Um, I didn't jump on that and I'm mad at myself because I really believe had I looked at it, I would have thought enough of us, maybe not to win the game, but the plus, plus nine, maybe yeah, but plus nine, it would have been Van Dyke and the offense can't be that bad. It's going to continue to roll. It's a good quarterback. Well, but, I mean, we did know they were making a change at OC. We did know that. Correct. But against a defense you don't trust with a defensive line that's not going to generate a pass rush. That would have been the preseason take on it. And now we feel very good about the pass rush going into this weekend for two reasons. Number one, Jared versus healthy, and he is graded out to be a top 50 pick by most any outlet. Saw Pro Football Focus had, like, Jared versus day yesterday on their publication. Mm -hmm. And then they're healthy in the interior as well. Plus, Miami's offensive line is not very good. So, yeah, just just thought you should know. It's crazy. There are also uh, I, I saw another line somewhere that uh, shocked me. I think I read where in the off season, Oklahoma was favored over Baylor by fourteen and a half. Good God, that's just crazy to think about now. You know, it's just, it's weird. All right, here are the games. Here we go. Let's get to it, guys. Let's hey, get hey, headliner. Look at that. Took Florida State minus seven and a half against Miami. Laid it, thought about being patient to see if it would come down even closer, even lower. But I saw that seven and a half. All week I've been emboldened. I have, without question, been more confident in Florida State in this particular game, this rivalry game against Miami, than I can remember being in a very long time. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. You, you've got to go back, Tom, to, to us winning 41-14 and not playing well against Miami. That, that the championship year. The yeah. best play of that game was a screen pass to mm. the left. I think it was before halftime. Yeah. And other than that, it, Jameis played. That was the worst game of his Heisman campaign. Yeah, he didn't play great. We were just we were off. We didn't, like Miami, we didn't even bother to, we're kind of like, oh, you're not really a threat. We kind of knew they weren't a threat. Yeah, it, you know? it was an unsatisfying blowout because, remember, the week before, they were honoring Bobby on the field. He planted a spear, and then Miami survived against Wake. They had a score inside of two minutes mm -hmm. to retain undefeated status because we wanted game day, and it was a top-10 yeah, matchup. But yeah, we knew it was yeah. a fake top-10 matchup, but we wanted that and on they, the ledger. Yeah, they were very close to throwing that away. And we destroyed them, but it just didn't. You know, it could have been 70 to 10. It's just we weren't sharp. So that is clearly the last time that I felt this kind of confidence. And and admittedly, you know, I was saying to you off air this morning when we were talking about the show today and just talking about football. Every time I do the hypotheticals with Miami about the matchup. And let's say I pose the questions of what does Miami do when we do this? What how does Miami respond if we do this? We choose to spread it out, if we choose all this stuff, right? Most of the time I'm struggling to find the answer for Miami. 
But when I do it in reverse, I pretty much have an answer, a football answer every time for whatever Miami's trying to do with our personnel. That doesn't mean that we won't go down there and screw up situations and allow Miami to hang around. It doesn't mean that it won't be uncomfortably close into the second half because we don't take care of business. I mean, it's still a game played by humans, so I get that. That's more of Florida State's identity than it isn't at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Which is important. Sorry. Yeah, that was You're right in between. I was trying to let you know I was about to cough. Um, but the, the point would be... That was our situational offense. That was very good method acting right there. Thank you. I But I again, if you remove the you from the helmet... If, if this doesn't personal, if this doesn't hit you down deep in the cockles where it is personal, you do care deeply. If, if this were just say, I don't know, uh, Tulsa and uh, in, in TCU and you had and you knew a lot about both teams, but you were completely indifferent about all, both of them. And you had been watching Tulsa struggle week in and week out. They had Miami's resume where they couldn't score against Virginia. They got housed at home by Duke. They got, uh, you know, you go on down the list. Middle Tennessee State walked into their house and dropped 45. All of these things, if that were the resume and you didn't care emotionally, you'd feel very comfortable saying, I think TCU is going to blow them out. You, you wouldn't even bat an eyelash. And nobody would be like, well, now, easy. You wouldn't care. But because it's Florida State, because it's Miami, because we have a, an emotional history baggage, if you will, with that team, and you see those helmets and it elicits a response, the whole thing, you're just, it's almost like you can't bring yourself to say what the evidence tells you you should. But I, I refuse to do that. I'm not giving in this week. The evidence tells me Miami is not good enough in a lot of ways to beat Florida State. They're going to need help from Florida State. Could happen. Could Florida State go out down there and play poorly? Hey, would we have predicted that it was going to be a drop festival against NC State? Right. That's the thing. Right. It's like, like betting I, on a, a, a big-time golfer in a major who has a real problem with the putter, especially from five feet and in. You're always nervous. You're like, I mean, Victor Hovland should really carry this event. And then you see him on the second hole, and this is something that affects him the rest of the round. Yeah. It's a little left to right or four feet. Oh, and oh. it lifts out. And, and you go, Victor, don't think about don't that. Don't think about that. It, it, it happens. You missed All the right. putt. Whatever. We made one drop. Guys, guys. Yeah. It doesn't mean everybody else has to drop a pass. But that game against NC State, it was just hot potato. And it was unbelievable to watch. And they would have pulled away to a place in which NC State would have laid down. They were done. It was over. But no. You did drop all those passes r repeatedly, and you you made some ridiculous decisions, and you didn't execute in the red zone. And the next thing you know, it's a game, and you're the one who is tightening up because there's something about to be lost. And that is the only side of this that makes me nervous, is that Florida State has more to lose in this game than Miami does. We're the better team. Mike Norvell's further along in the rebuild. This is a game that Florida State ought to win as a heavy favorite on the road. All of the trends point towards Florida State winning this game. So where's your level of maturity? Do you handle the emotions that go with a rivalry game like this one? You know, a year ago when we played Florida, we, we allowed Florida to get into our heads before that game. We allowed – you all right? <laughs> No, this is you jog my memory because we got a good email about that last night. So I'll forward it. I got it. I got that. You got it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I will say that that was a, it was a good email, but it, it was a reminder, by the way, Tom, again, that that can happen. Like they were immature a year ago and they allowed that to affect the way that they played. Have you learned your lesson from that? I, there's no doubt Mike has talked about that this week to his team or will. Because if you're the inferior team and you're frustrated and you're the team that that really has to, to, to factor in a lot of other things that have to go right that are kind of out of your control for you to win a game, you got nothing to lose. Why wouldn't you try to fluster Florida State, to entice them, to, to get into their head? 
And it's not just about the Florida game. You had the incident between the third and fourth quarters of FSU Miami here last year where everybody's on the field. And I got to tell you, that's the one thing, I mean, among anything else, mm. in the time that Mike Norvell has made any public comments where I went, no, man, no. Do you remember when they had the series in the offseason and uh, they're, they're highlighting the playmakers and it's Coach Norvell and Jordan Travis sitting in the film room and and they're going through this particular moment and Mike Norvell says something to the effect of, I'll be honest, right here, what I was thinking, this is awesome. No, no, man. That's not awesome that everybody's out of the 50-yard line between the third and fourth quarters. We don't want to engage in this nonsense. You don't want to. You want to be the more composed team. Yeah, you're better than that. Now, I get this. This is an emotional game, and these two teams have a history of having a really, really heated emotional rivalry, and that's fine. But when you're the, when you're the class on the field, when you're the team that's supposed to win, when you're the one that needs to look at this as a business trip, then you remove all that. You you know, it's only when it's one versus two and both teams are awesome and we're both jumping up and down that you're like, okay, I got it. Here we go. There's a lot on the line. Right. Miami, Miami's trying to bait you into doing dumb things and getting into your head. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, as calm as he was on the sideline, and as much as I enjoy it in the moment, you remember years ago, this is 2007, Florida, Georgia. And oh, when they, all of Georgia, all of Georgia players, goes yeah, on, yeah, you know, into the end zone. Yeah. After, yeah. That was an interesting move by Mark Richt at yeah, the time. He's like, screw it, do it. Everybody loved it. Me, I'm like, nah, man, you know what? You just own them. What you do is you beat them by 30, and then you could do whatever you want after the game. But let's not engage in this nonsense, this yeah. very stupid stuff. I didn't even get through my games. I stopped right at Florida State minus seven and a half against Miami. That's how pumped I am for this game. We'll come back on the other side. I'll give you the rest of the games. Those of you that are watching online already saw the card, but I'll go through the card and give you my reasoning and all that good stuff in a moment. Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. When I get home from work, I'm ready to relax. So I call Swain Pools and Spas to put my pool in the back. I call Swain Pools and Spas. Now I'm soaking up the fun when I want to. Truckloads of new and used Caldera and Hot Spring Spas are available now at Swain Pools and Spas. Don't wait. Get to Swain Pools and browse the best inventory to find the spa of your dreams. These won't last long, so come see us today. Just look for the huge sign on Tharp Street or call 386-7113 for Swain Pools and Spas. I know what you're thinking right now. Where can I find a place to get my car fixed and also check out some awesome new hot tubs and spas while I wait? Well, you're in luck. Because when you bring your car or truck in to get serviced at Tallahassee Car Care, it's under the same roof as Swain Pools and Spas. For tires, brakes, bodies, tune-ups, oil changes, and all the service you need to get back on the road, choose the certified technicians at Tallahassee Car Care. Drop by our shop on Bark Street or visit online at TallahasseeCarCare.com. Hi, this is Jamie McClenney from Trek Financial in Tallahassee. Managing downside risk in your portfolio is one of the biggest challenges that you'll face in retirement. Trillions of dollars in stimulus from the Federal Reserve and D.C. politicians combined with zero interest rates have propped up financial markets since the financial crisis ended in 2009. The Fed recently ended quantitative easing and has started to raise interest rates at a time when the global economy was already slowing. Have you considered what another 50% correction in the stock market would do to your retirement plan? If you're concerned about where this all might be headed and would like to find out about the potential benefits of an active risk management strategy for your portfolio, give me a call at 850-900-5200 and schedule a time for a review of your portfolio from an active risk management perspective. Make Jamie your first call for a second opinion. Investment advisory services are offered through Trek Financial LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. This is Kyle, service manager from Barano Heating and Air. Schedule an appointment from your mobile device to learn about our total comfort service program with guaranteed same-day service, 15% off necessary repairs, and $25 berry books to use towards air filters and other products. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Barano Heating and Air any day, anytime, anywhere. Online at BaranoAC.com. Florida license, CAC 1816-186. Physical stress on our bodies can take its toll as the years go by. Whether you're looking to get back into an old sport or just want to spend more time outdoors to explore all life has to offer in our beautiful city, the dedicated team at TOC is here for you every step of the way. You can trust TOC for all your orthopedic needs. And now, scheduling an appointment has never been easier. Just visit TeamTOC.com and click Schedule Online. 
That's TeamTOC.com. Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF. Your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk an issue i'm looking at a couple different reports now and tom i know you got a guy you got a weather window guy so we can look at his predictions as well but i'm seeing an evening in the 70s and uh, just a 25 percent chance of rain so yeah. they're partly cloudy sunday the rain's coming uh with higher percentages and then on into monday and tuesday so i think i think we're gonna be all right the interesting thing is it looks like it's accompanied by a decent amount of wind, but I don't know how it travels through that stadium, given that the roof is kind of semi-closed. And I don't know. You've been there more than I have. In fact, I've never been inside there. It, if it can actually make it through the concourse the way it would, say, some of these modern-day baseball yeah. stadiums. No, it's it's fine. And it's talking about, what are they talking about, 15 miles per hour or something like that? I, I, That's enough to affect maybe a, a decent length kick and... You know, we don't want any variables for kicks or a minimal amount of variables. Well, Tom, I like to look and see if it's going to be a waxing gibbous or not. And uh, at that point, you get a better feel for uh, how the tides are going to pull and whether or not we'll make that kick. I, I, I factor in the wind as well as the uh, the moon cycle, just so you know. So the wind does not concern you for no. Brian Fitz? No. Okay. No, because when you're kicking a field goal to go up 30, you know, it's not like you, you worry about that's it. That's a good retort. You, you know, know why? You don't, you don't worry about it. You know why that's especially good? Because that means that you're up 27, which mm. means you've made a kick. Yeah. No, or yeah. Two. Yeah, that means, you know, you're like, oh, what the difference between 27 and 30 is just bragging. Or you've missed an extra point. So could it's be. Entirely, entirely possible. All right, here we go. Here are those picks now that I didn't get to last segment because I was carried away and talking about my embrace of Florida State minus seven and a half against Miami. I'm not a believer in LSU's t- turn around to the level that clearly the committee and others are having this team ranked as high as they do. So I think Bama knows how to handle uh, the shoddy play at quarterback for LSU. Uh, they'll make him throw the ball. And I'm going to bet that he doesn't succeed as often as LSU is going to need him to. And I think he'll also make some mistakes. So I'll take Bama, Bama and lay the 13 and a half. But I'll confess. That if Bama is if Bama plays poorly and and this becomes I mean that environment is amazing and those are great fans and Bama has been bad on the road so okay I mean I'll allow for me doing two fingers to my eyes two fingers back to you Bama but I think Bama will be buttoned up ready to play and 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 I think they'll they'll beat an LSU team that they should handle pretty easily. Well they get burned more often down the field through the passing game than they do by you know the Johnny Manzels of the world like they well, used to. Yeah. That would be the test here. Now Jaden Daniels is incredible at scrambling and making good some at things it, happen. As we saw, yeah. But their offensive line is also very suspect. I yeah, I like Alabama here. Uh okay, so a couple of factors right off the bat. I'm sure you're gonna hit the siren on this one. I took Liberty plus 14 against Arkansas. <laughs> Some things to factor in here about Liberty. 
Um, first of all, Hugh Freeze probably wants the Auburn job, probably wants to get a major job. I know he's got an extension at Liberty. He doesn't want to be at Liberty. How could you? But the point would be they've played very well, and they can really score. Liberty can really put up points. I'm not in love with Arkansas's defense at all. They have a like opponent. They both put a hurting on BYU. Liberty beat BYU 41 to 14. Arkansas went into Provo and beat BYU, but they gave up, I think, 30 something points. They did win mm. the game. So I just feel like it's a score fest here. And I'm getting four, I'm getting two touchdowns. And Hugh Freeze trying to make a statement, trying to go into SEC country and be like, remember me? I know they do in Tampa. I'm stuck over here with Liberty guys. You know that's no place for me. Or is it? But the point would be, hey, I think he I think he makes that move. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, Georgia minus seven and a half against Tennessee. Here's my thought on this, and I may lose this bet. But my reasoning is the worst unit on the field in this game is Tennessee's defense. I understand they played well against Kentucky, who I think is sliding and may lose to Missouri this weekend. But Tennessee's defense has been shaky. And I, I I would say that I think Georgia does get enough stops against this high-powered offense to make the difference. Um, we'll see, because if your retort to me is that Bennett hasn't looked great this year and has had some non-competitive passes for Georgia and is a guy that you may not trust in this matchup, uh, it's a fair response on your part at that point. I'm not going to push back with too much there because he worries me. He hasn't been as good this year, but I do think Georgia's defense will win them this game. Yeah, when you play matters, we talk about that week to week. In this case, year over year, this is the year to go get Georgia if you're going to, if you're Tennessee. Last year's Georgia team uh, Oh, uh, no, 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 no. As, well, even as know. good as that offense yeah, is. No, they, yeah. They're, they're, yeah, last year's Georgia team is going to put right. a hurting on Tennessee, yeah. Fun game. I can't wait to watch it. It's why, it, you know, removing all of the breakdown and the in, look, the bottom line is you're a college football fan. I'm a college football fan. This is the game you long for. I do think it's awfully interesting that Tennessee is ranked number one in all the land and they're catching eight and a half points. Hmm. Number one, huh? Catching more than a touchdown? Jeez. Well, the playoff committee knows more than Vegas, okay? <laughs> I guess. Uh, Tulane minus seven and a half against Tulsa. This has a lot to do. <laughs> RS is in the jackpot now, okay? Uh, so just so you know, if you've been paying attention, I've had a little little ride that I've gone on with Tulane this year. Tulane has done me right. They're a nice story, quiet little story, little top 25 team that can, right? They're, they're, they're every week. You're on a wave. Oh, what you're on. well done. Well, well done. Uh. Ryan, I know you think Hyatt's going to have a big game against Georgia's secondary, and it's fair to say that because despite the whole world knowing who he is and that he's going to be targeted 15 times a game, nobody covers him. Nobody covers him. I love going online and looking at all these breakdowns of this Tennessee offense because I really want to know. This is just about pure interest. I'm just curious. How in the world does a guy who's on everybody's radar – who has, I mean, it's not like they don't have ample amount of game film to watch that guy torching teams like, I don't know, Alabama. And nobody covers him. It's bizarre. Good job, William. I see you there. North Carolina minus seven against Virginia. Uh, this is more about Virginia. I Virginia has corners that can cover. It's the best part of Virginia's team. So North Carolina, which has arguably the best offense in the ACC and best quarterback in the ACC, might struggle a little bit here. But that Virginia offense is just – I can't watch them. This is about a sandwich line. And and I know that the Coastal is pretty rough. The pit trip shouldn't be that much of a thing mm -hmm. for North Carolina. But they did struggle in that game in the first 25, 30 minutes. Uh, and then next week they play Wake Forest. So I, that's probably what this line's about, too, that North Carolina might, you know, Mac Brown especially might say, y'all take a week. It's okay. Well, we'll see. I mean, Mac's too busy eating. But I would, I would tell you that I worried when I, when I typed this in, I worried a little bit, partly because you've gotten in my head with North Carolina who's having a fine season. Um, in what way? 
Well, because just in general, every time phones? I type North Carolina down for a bet, I hear Tom going, Jeff, those frauds are going to let you down. <laughs> well, that's a good rule of thumb. But in this case, Virginia, yeah, my I mean, God, Virginia. if that offense was going to come to life, mm. that productive ass offense from last year was going to come to life. It would have done it before November the 1st. It's not coming to life. No, no, it's not coming to life. They're a mess on offense. So I'll take North Carolina. I took TCU minus eight against Texas Tech. If you haven't noticed, I like to bet on TCU often. They continue to do well for me, and I will just ride that wave as well. Sonny Dykes, man, is out here beating ranked teams. That's what he does. He's like, well, or another ranked team. Let's beat that ass. Let's go, everybody. I will also take, uh, what did I get? Uh, oh, App State. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All right. That's fair. That's fair. I thought I could kind of sneak through there without anybody noticing. But I did take Appalachian State minus three against Coastal Carolina. It's not the same Coastal Carolina team that it was in years past. That reputation has been besmirched. Give me App State. Boise State minus seven and a half. BYU is at a tailspin. Boise State will add to their woes. They also have injury woes. So give me Boise State here, minus the seven and a half. And I do like what Director Matthew did here. Uh, and good job. I'm, I'm sure Tom likes this as well. Yeah, I saw it in the chat. I'm like, where did who came up with that? And then it was on the graphic. It's so on the I graphic. Have guessed that. Yeah. Instead of Notre Dame, he wrote Notre Dump and uh, Clemson. I'm giving the three and a half. Everybody. So work with me here, guys. I had Notre Dame last week to go and beat Syracuse on the road. And I took them on the money line. I didn't even need the points. You keep your stupid points. Wrong team's favorite. Give me Notre Dame. And they won. The this the styles make fights. This is about matchups. Notre Dame could win this game. Clemson's not a juggernaut. They don't deserve to be number four in the country at all. They've got inconsistent play, a quarterback. All that's true. But from a personnel standpoint, Notre Dame wants to line up and just run the ball. They want to bludgeon you. It is their identity. It's what they, I mean, that's their calling card. They're going to they're gonna run the ball 40, 50 times with their backs. They're going to run the ball. I don't think they have enough weaponry on the outside to make Clemson respect the passing game. So Clemson's going to walk a safety up. They're going to play with that front four. They're going to be told repeatedly, don't pull a Florida State here and let these guys just run on you. They Clemson was worried that we could throw the ball. So they just let their front four, but they protected their corners. And we ran it on them. So what is happening, I think, with this line is that people saw that Florida State could run on Clemson, and they know that Notre Dame is a running team and wants to run, and that game's on the road for Clemson. And they're going, man, Notre Dame's starting to play well. They just beat Syracuse. They're going to kick on Jesus. Yeah, gonna, they're going to run the football. We now know Clemson's susceptible to the run. Eh. I don't think Clemson is susceptible to run if they don't want to be. And I don't think they respect Notre Dame's passing game. So they're going to take the run away and say, beat us throwing the ball. Can you? And I think the answer is no. Now, the only way I lose this bet, I think, is on the other side of the ball. Clemson's quarterback yeah, play. Yeah. They could do the one-two shuffle. Yes, and that, going, that, picky, now picky, that picky. can happen, and that's why it's gambling, kids. That's why it's gambling. You don't know. If DJ goes out there and sorry ass, throwing the ball in the dirt, Pick six the other way. Next thing you know, I'm going, well, that guy's going to lose us the game. It's an interesting line for that, you know, reason. Because last week, the weird one was why is Wake, that's a lot of W's, only favored by as much as they are at Louisville? What, what gives here? Mm -hmm. Now, there's no way that Vegas knows they're going to turn the ball over six times in a quarter. <laughs> but I think they knew that Wake was going to turn the ball over six yeah. times in a quarter. I don't know how they do it. That line was NFL interesting all week. Like, what do they know? Yeah, well, and they ended up being, you know, pressy. Why, I, I, you know, why are the Chiefs only favored by two and a half at Indy? Like, it was that kind of a line. I'm going, what? I'm still, that is the, by the way, that particular example that you just gave. Might have been five and a half, but I, whatever I, that. I, it was something really low like yeah. that. It, whatever it was. And I remember at the time we were like, what's going on? What, what is happening? Why is this line like this? And then there I was like an a-hole. In the fourth quarter, watching that game, and I'm seeing Indianapolis drive the ball down the field. I'm like, there it is. Indianapolis is going to beat Kansas City. There is, they could play 10 times, 
Kansas City would win nine, but on this day, as predicted by Vegas, Indianapolis is winning this game. And you kind of knew it maybe like 10 minutes in. You're like, oh, man, see, they don't look right. They're choppy. How do, how do you know that? How right. do you <laughs> yeah, you're at a poker game. There's yeah. a person that's under your skin because you're on tilt and you should have, you know, taken control of your emotions. And you're like, you know what? Prove it. And you throw the extra 50 in. Mm -hmm. And then they do. And you're like, oh, they're not bluffing. Yeah. And I knew they weren't bluffing. Yeah, but I did it. Why but did I do my that? My pride was called into question, <laughs> and I'm too proud. Maybe later in the show, I give you that bonus segment, guys, where I just randomly tell you my Sunday money line four pick parlay that has been rolling on Big River lately. Four for four last week. Jeff Cambridge on 93.3 Real Talk Radio, Warchant TV. Your local news now. A Tallahassee murder suspect accused of killing a woman and dumping her body on Wiley Road is a registered sex offender who is out on bond awaiting trial in another assault. Leon County Sheriff's deputies arrested 40-year-old Davon Young last week and charged him with murder. The woman's body was discovered inside a plastic storage container off Wiley Road on October 23rd. At the time, Young was wearing a GPS tracking device in connection with a previous charge, and they were able to track his movements as well as capture him on surveillance, stopping at a gas station in the victim's car. Young is now being held without bond. A Jackson County man, Troy Hezzy Lamar Summers Jr. has been arrested for allegedly pointing a gun at a school bus on Tuesday after witnesses told deputies he pointed what was believed to be a gun in the direction of the bus after his kids were dropped off. The driver of the bus continued his route but then called law enforcement immediately. Deputies found Summers sometime later at his house. This is Rachel Lene with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frobley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. A blend of clouds and sun this afternoon with daytime highs approaching 83. Winds out of the northeast, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, lows level off around 57. Ample sunshine expected tomorrow. Daytime highs approaching 82. Dry with temperatures above average Saturday and Sunday and highs in the mid-80s. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 81. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Jeff, look at this beautiful day, man. Yeah, it's getting a little chilly. I like it. You know, I'm a colder weather guy, but I worry about it for you because uh, you can't wear the Speedo. In oh, the cold. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to wear a Speedo in the cold. Jeff, it's always Speedo weather, man. We can always do this. Besides, my pool, it's heated. Which means you're insufferable in a Speedo year-round. Cannonball! Still gross. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Hey, Greg Tish here along with Matty Rowe. And you can listen to us Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Real Talk 93.3. Matt, we give away a couple things each week. Just a few. We've got the Florida Farm Bureau Insurance Wheel of Food. We have Give Me a Second, where we play a second of a song, and you guess that song. And we also play FLA or Nay. We have a lot of fun Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on The Greg Tish Show. I think that's enough. We can talk about our feelings. <laughs> no, that's a lot. <laughs> the Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3. Uh, I mean, noon games back in the day uh, when we were in school. I had a roommate that would crank that at like 6 a.m. to get us out of bed. And I was like, listen, I like Bob Marley and the Whalers with the best of them, but why that song? It's the most played Bob Marley song. Oh, it's a great song, but why, why do you always play that to wake us up? And he was like, it's just so happy. 
And I know you're going to be mad one way or the other when I crank this stereo because it's six in the morning and you didn't get home till three. So I get it. You're tired. But if I crank something that was angry, it would just ruin it. Even you'd come out even angrier. Yeah. This you what are you gonna fight me listening to Bob Marley? You can't. It'll take the sting out of it. Yeah. That's a good idea. It wasn't. It, he wasn't wrong. Yeah. It would make you smile after you got over the initial shock of hearing the speakers cranked at six a.m. for a noon kickoff after you've only been asleep for a couple of hours. Yeah. In college, my alarm was on my phone, and it, it was the sound of a missile silo, and that was never pleasant maybe i should have done that <laughs> and taken some of his advice and taken a sting out of it something delightful you know it's great about getting older and having morning responsibilities whenever that happens in your life whether it's a job or kids or both when it happens and it happens to where you have to start new habits and you then have to be up every day like i i don't have a choice i have to be up even i like getting up but even if i didn't i have to be up because i gotta get bryce goes to high school and high school high school starts early tom I mean, damn it, man. These kids got to be at school by 7 15, 7 20. You, and kids take forever to get ready in the morning because they're just laying there in bed. They won't wake up. I now know this as a parent. I'm always having to go back in there, get the hell up. And I try to be gentle. I try to go in there first, but like, hey, it's time to get up. Let's wake up, baby. You know, let's come on. Let's get, let's get dressed. I'm going to get your breakfast ready. You know, get your stuff. Let's go. It never works. Never works. You got to go back in there a second, third time, usually. And it's usually there's some sort of threat involved. Like, all right, all right. Now, listen, if you don't get up this time, it's all that stuff, right? But once you get in the habit of that, you can never really sleep in again. Like I'm doomed. I cannot sleep in. I don't, I could go to bed at five. My eyes would open at 545. It just does. It, I, I can't help it. But there's a plus to that besides getting your day started. The plus is you never need an alarm. I don't use an alarm. Ooh, that's still dangerous. Not yeah. for me anymore. It's been consistent enough that I wake up no matter what, that I don't even set an alarm because I hate them. I hate alarms. I hate everything about them. When an alarm is in a commercial, I'll turn the commercial immediately. The second anybody uses like the classic sound of a of a, an alarm clock that eh, eh, like that, no, uh, no, you you just lost me. I don't even know what you're selling. Goodbye, done. Can't do it. I hate that sound with a passion. I'm sure it's intended to be that way, but I got to where when I don't need it anymore, there it is. That's it. That's all. Don't worry about. It. I just opened Maybe my you could use whatever uh, horn sound they have at the DJ set down at, at uh, Miami have. Gardens when they hire him once every two years. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a sellout. The parking lot littered with trash. And not just the people. You're going to see it. It'll be everywhere. It is an all-time classic going down there. I, I embrace it. I'm not going this year. It's my son's birthday. Most years I go down there when we play. I have for a very long time, and I've learned to embrace everything that's ugly about it, all of it. I know the do's and don'ts. I know how to take it all in. How do we even appreciate the absurdity of some of it? I've, like, learned that about this rivalry. My dad started me taking, taking me to the old Orange Bowl back in the day many, many moons ago, early 80s, all the way through. And so there was a stretch where I did not miss Florida State, Miami, home or away for over 25 years. Went to every one of them. You know, I've never been to this rivalry in the south, southern part of the state. You've never gone down there? Something's that, something always fell through. There was always a circumstance. It's not for a lack of wanting to or fear of going there or anything along those lines. It's just... It's something has always not worked out. I want to, um, depending on when the game is two years from now down there, I'll take you down there. Um, but we'll go together, buddy. I, there, there's enough really good things. You know, I obviously we could all point out the bad, but there's a lot of really good things there too. And it can be fun. And you would be with good people that uh, you know, and we would all have a really we'll good time. We'll go to Las Taquitas. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Your place, Las Taquitas. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. We would go have a blast. And there are a few other things that are a lot of fun. We could gamble if we wanted. We could, we could have a good time. There's a lot of great restaurants. A lot of great restaurants if you know where to go. My wife was down there in 06. I think that was the Monday night game um, for, yeah, it was Monday night for Marching Chiefs. And that was still at the old place. And they were uh, throwing full beer bottles and beer cans at the at the Chiefs, who are incidentally not going this year because Miami makes life on 
Well, they also throw him in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. They put him yep. out where you can't even hear him, so it's almost pointless. Full glass beer bottles being chucked at the Chiefs. Yeah, not, so and, that was and, what it was. You know what's nuts? Nobody's shocked to hear you say that. Not even Miami fans. T Rev, the game dev, writes, which had the better fourth and 14, 2003 UF or 2021 UM? You know, they're both always going to be um, nestled near and dear to my heart because I just love his little South Park character. I do I'm too. sorry. That's a, it, it is a great thing. It makes me laugh. I, um, I was at Eric Lou Allen's house for the fourth and 14 in 2003. And I've told the story. Eric is a big man, former offensive lineman for Florida State. I picked him up. I was so filled with energy and enthusiasm after the fourth and 14, the touchdown, PK Sam. Uh, but I have to tell you, the 2021 fourth and 14, uh, I would I, sen sentimentally, I would tell you, means more because I was with both my boys and my dad in the stands. And that was freaking awesome. That was incredible. I think the 03 is just objectively better because you have another bomb behind it. Oh, you know, PK Sam touchdown is incredible. last year. You had a one yard touchdown run, which is great, but I mean, it's like two daggers on that drive. Well, there's a lot. There's a lot to take in there. A lot of reasons for both. Hour number two, forthcoming. Stay with Jeff Cameron, show 93 3, Real Talk Radio, and War Chant TV. You were always more than my mom. You were my role model, my best friend, and biggest supporter. You filled my days with unconditional love. And you also prepared for the day when you couldn't be here. Because of the woman you were back then, I'm able to be the woman I am now. Your planning made this moment possible. Set your family up for life. Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance, your friends for life. This is Andy Cohen. When I was a law enforcement officer, I devoted my life to a career of service and protection. Who's protecting you? Give me a call. 850-671-FARM. That's 671-FARM. Helping you is what we do best. Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company, Jackson, Mississippi. Not licensed to do business in all 50 states. Hey Tallahassee, it's Sarah with Seminole Autoglass. You're probably driving right now, which means you're surrounded by glass. Did you know that each piece is made differently? Your windshield is two sheets of glass with a thin plastic in between. This allows it to take an impact without going all the way through. Side and back glasses are typically tempered. This strengthening process is what allows them to be shattered in the event of an emergency. Regardless of the glass or how it breaks, we can help. Trust your local Autoglass experts. Seminole Autoglass, proudly serving the Big Ben for over 15 years. Better call Seminole. This is a special alert to all Americans who own a vehicle with less than 200,000 miles with an auto warranty about to expire or with no warranty coverage at all. Due to a decline in the economy, CarShield is announcing a low-cost month-to-month vehicle protection plan that is now available to the public to save any driver out-of-pocket expenses on future auto repairs. Call now to find out how you can pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. Yes, you heard that correctly. Pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. An open phone line has been established for all drivers to call for a free quick quote. Call 800-279-0433 now. Drivers who are covered will not have to pay for covered repairs again. This protection plan is at an all-time low. Additionally, drivers who activate this vehicle protection today will also receive free roadside assistance, free towing, and car rental options at no additional cost. Call us for your free quick quote today. 800-279-0433. That's 800-279-0433. What do you have to lose? Call 800-279-0433. Again, 800-279-0433. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. Breaking news this hour from townhall.com. I'm John Scott. President Biden says that former President Trump still can't accept 
that he didn't win in 2020. He refuses to accept the will of the people. He refuses to accept the fact that he lost. He has abused his power and put the loyalty to himself before loyalty to the Constitution. And he's made a big lie. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy reacts to President Biden's address on democracy. President Biden delivered a national address from Washington, D.C. on the state of democracy since the January 6th attack on the Capitol. The president says election deniers, candidates who say they don't accept the results of the 2020 presidential election, are a threat to that democracy. House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy had this reaction on Twitter. Quote, President Biden is trying to divide and deflect at a time when America needs to unite because he can't talk about his policies that have driven up the cost of living. The American people aren't buying it. Correspondent Bernie Bennett reporting. Also at townhall.com, Israeli forces have killed at least four Palestinians as Israel counts the final votes in its national elections. A Palestinian who stabbed a police officer in Jerusalem's old city was shot at and killed, according to police. The police officer was lightly wounded. In the West Bank, mourners poured into the streets for the funeral of a Palestinian man who police say threw a firebomb at them during a raid. The violence comes amid a backdrop in which former Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is expected to regain power. Israeli political analyst Yohanan Plesner. The Israeli people wanted a change and they wanted the government to pay more attention, serious attention to questions of personal safety and security. I'm Karen Chamas. And the Dow is down 97 points. The S&P 500, 27 points lower. More at townhall.com. Hey, I'm Andy. If you don't know me, it's probably because I'm not famous. But I did start a men's grooming company called Harry's. The idea for Harry's came out of a frustrating experience I had buying razor blades. Most brands were overpriced, overdesigned, and out of touch. At Harry's, our approach is simple. Here's our secret. We make sharp, durable blades and sell them at honest prices for as low as $2 each. We care about quality so much that we do some crazy things, like buy a world-class German blade factory. Obsessing over every detail means we're confident in offering a 100% quality guarantee. Millions of guys have already made the switch to Harry's, so thank you if you're one of them. And if you're not, we hope you give us a try with this special offer. Get a Harry starter set with a five-blade razor, weighted handle, shave gel, and a travel cover. All for just three bucks, plus free shipping. Just go to harrys.com and enter code SLEEK at checkout. That's harrys.com, code SLEEK. Enjoy. Lawson and Lawson Electrical Services has been Tallahassee's preferred residential electrician for over 30 years. Hi, this is Rowdy Lawson, and we've earned our reputation because we care about our customers, about quality, and about providing great service. We stand by every job we do and consider it a privilege to work on a family project like a new house, a custom addition, or a green renovation. For all your residential or service projects, call the good guys, Lawson and Lawson Electrical Services, 562-4111. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. conversation about 
Florida State, Miami. Uh, I saw where a few of you agree agree with my sentiment that I, I think it's a it's an opportunity here for Florida State. It really is. I mean, you, you can't say for certain these are uh, again games played by humans, as I like to say. So who knows if we we come out tight or we blow some opportunities in the red zone, which has been our mo this year. We'll, we'll see. But I I really think if Florida State plays well, if Florida State plays to the uh, to, to their ability, to the best of their ability. Uh, I know it's like bland, cliche analysis. What I'm saying is I think Florida State may be primed here in a very good spot. You know, we talk a lot about who you play matters, when you play them matters. And, you know, when you're injured or you are you got a couple guys out in key matchups against certain teams, it's, it's more precarious than others where you're kind of like, ah, how are we going to scheme around that? Miami is kind of beat up at key positions. They haven't played real well. I would guess their psyche's not great. Yeah, they'll puff out their chest. It's Florida State. They'll see the garnet and the gold, and they'll for once have a packed house to play in front of, and it's at night, and it's a rivalry game, and they're desperate. Initially, I think, yeah, they'll come out with a lot of what for. All teams should in a rivalry matchup, that's for sure. Uh, but then the game starts, and, and that, you know, emotions settle down. It's about execution. It's about playing well and executing the plan. And I think if Florida State does that well, uh, if both teams play to the best of their ability, I think Florida State covers this game, and I think they win it comfortably. I really do. The chance for a blowout, I believe, is real. Doesn't mean it'll happen, but I believe it's real. I've predicted us to win big. And one of the reasons is I think Florida State is going to play well. I, it, oddly, for as much as we were frustrated last week with the way they came out to start that game fresh off a of bye, you know, you could argue it didn't take long for them to realize Georgia Tech didn't have anything for them. Georgia Tech wasn't going to win that game. We could have played 18 quarters and they wouldn't. I mean, they were never going to win that game. And Georgia Tech was kind of in a primed to quit moment. They were they had just come off that disappointing game and loss. Their interim head coach, you lose your luster as soon as you lose a game, and they did right away, you know. And you're coming in here against an outmatched team, um, a team you're outmatched by. And so anyhow, the tendency is to be sloppy. Now, I know we don't get the benefit of the doubt because we've been sloppy in situations against a lot of teams, but that is something that without question, they had to have talked about, stressed, reviewed on film. At some point, they're going to get that right. That doesn't mean they're going to be a good red zone team. It does mean they may pay closer attention to details and be buttoned up, though. Those are two different things. They're bad in the red zone because they're not physically able to bully anybody in a condensed field. I think they'll introduce Jordan Travis's legs to that mix, and that changes the math. They have sometimes been bad in the red zone because they couldn't rely on their field goal kicker to make a kick. I think he can make kicks. I think he's back to hitting the ball well. So these are two things that I'm no longer as concerned about right now. So you can't tell me that they didn't walk off that field against Georgia Tech because Mike said it and not have to hear from their head coach and position their segment group coaches how sloppy they were, how many times they had to go over that. I mean, this is – he got everything he wanted in that game. They they covered, they won comfortably, and they made a ton of mistakes so he could read them the riot act. I think they're locked in. I think they're going down there to whoop some ass. For Mike, it's a statement game. It's an opportunity to beat your arch rival twice in a row steal some recruits, make a statement about what your program is, where they're at, and where they're going, more importantly. And if Miami can't match over the long haul what Florida State is presenting from a talent standpoint but an execution standpoint, we know between the 20s, Florida State executes against everybody. Now we're just talking about making sure you get points in the red zone. If Miami can't slow them down at all, I just don't see how Miami has the offense Given the lack of weapons at wide receiver, an injury to the quarterback, we'll see how healthy he is. I don't even know if Van Dyke's going to play. I know he's allegedly practicing this week. We'll see. Seems like some of his answers are leaving wiggle room for when he doesn't play. So I, I suspect of that. If he does play, how effective is he? Is he still dealing with that injury? Their offensive line has struggled to block it up against anybody with a pulse on defense. We're getting healthier on the defensive line at just the right time. It's the home stretch, and it begins in this game where you have a chance to harass, harangue the quarterback into mistakes because they'll make a lot of them, as evidenced by the eight turnovers they had against Duke and against others where they've turned the football over. I just feel like 
it all adds up to a great result for Florida State. I hope they're able to maximize their talent, that they're right mentally and physically at just the right time. I hope my hunch that Miami is reeling and that everything you see early in the game is a lot of false bravado from a team that doesn't really believe they can win. We'll find out. We'll find out. I'm excited about it. Um, but I really – I didn't run from it this week. I really – I feel like Florida State's primed to play well and, and get a big win here. Yeah, the only FEI and, – and I looked at this this week for the piece that's going to go up on, on War Chant the next day or so. Um, but the only real offense that Miami has seen this year, Miami's defense, has been North Carolina, and that's a very good offense. It's a – you know, FEI is just an efficiency index. Yes, it so is. it gives you a better look because it adjusts for opponent – and North Carolina's in the top 15 of the country right now in offense. May is a very, very good quarterback. It's an explosive offense. Florida State is just behind North Carolina. They're around 17 or 18 in the country. And I'll bet if they were better in the red zone, they'd, they'd be, be top 10 than, yeah, or, or yeah. top 8 or whatever. But other than that, the offenses that Miami have seen in Power 5 have been in the hundreds for the most part. You've got Southern Miss, which is 120, Middle Tennessee, Duke, 106. Virginia, Middle Tennessee. Duke even is if, actually the best of the rest of the bunch, good and they're around 58 to 60. I forget exactly the number, but it's but it's somewhere in there. So they're wholly average, right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And North, this is where you can hear the other side of it, too. North Carolina had to try to not drop 40 on Miami. They really did. May actually played what I think is his worst game that I've seen him play. And I've watched about four or five of his games because I love watching good quarterbacks play. Remember the Sunday of uh, LSU? Mm -hmm. That game was on. They were playing Appy earlier in the yeah, day. Yeah. And you could see that, oh, they've, they've got them one. Well, North they got Carolina, a guy. They got a guy. They were talking about how this is the guy. This is the one. He threw two awful interceptions, tried to throw three or four others, missed open reads. I mean, basic stuff that a freshman's going to do. And then between that and they go for it on fourth and I think it's more than four inside the 10-yard line. They come away empty in that possession. That's how they arrive at 27. North Carolina. There weren't a ton of possessions or plays in that game either. So that's how North Carolina got stuck on 27. The question is, on Monday when we return to the airwaves, are we saying the same things about Florida State's offense that you had to try to only score 24, 27 points, or do we maximize to your point? Is this a maximum output game? Because if it is, North Carolina was scoring the 40s, and we should absolutely score in the 40s. The Duke one is, is that's misleading. Yeah, because because of eight, turnovers. eight turnovers. And even Middle Tennessee, to a degree, is a little bit misleading because Van Dyke throws two picks inside his own 10-yard line. One was a first and goal. The other was a pick six. So it's 10 free points they spot Middle Tennessee, which is, again, 106th in the country in overall efficiency, and they boat raced Miami. Yeah. But this, this team, this Hurricane team, their schedule has been weak, period. It has been weak, full stop. This is the best football team that they're going to have seen all season long. Not yeah. even close. Yeah, and 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 I think they're going to get beat by this team the way they've been beat by lesser teams uh, repeatedly. I, I do. Now, there's no getting around it. When you have expectation, that is the only time that disappointment can absolutely enter into the uh, equation because disappointment is what happens when expectations are not met. And you know, I, I don't know. I don't like to walk around my life scared to death that something's not going to work the way that I thought it would or, you know, worry about an outcome instead of the process. And I don't even mean that to sound coachy. And, you know, I'm saying, like, if I think that we've done all the right things to prepare for our vacation, I'm not going to sit around worried that once we get to Chicago next weekend that, uh, you know, the, pay, the plane's going to break down on the runway and we're going to have to wait six hours to board. You know, like, you don't do that. You don't do that. Yeah, those things could happen. Sure. You know, life throws a lot of stuff at you that is unexpected. But that's not how you go about the process of judging, evaluating, preparing. I, I just, like, Florida State, to me, given all the evidence that we have, should go play a good football game against a Miami team that is in year one of another rebuild with lesser personnel, injuries, and real crisis of identity on offense. They don't have difference makers at wide receiver. They've got a good tight end who does suffer from the drops. They've got inconsistent play at quarterback, partly because he doesn't like the offense that he's in, and certainly not as much as he did last year's offense. 
and an offensive line that struggles to keep them clean. And the running game takes forever. They've got a couple of quick hitter plays, but most of them are just long developing runs with a bad O-line. So this is all the stuff that you look at, you evaluate, you look at it from a lot of different angles, like I'm fond of saying. Of course, styles make fights. Certain matchups are bad for certain teams, but not others, even though they're of the equivalent. You know, it, it happens a lot. But every time I looked at this game, I just kept coming back to, ooh, I don't know. I just don't see it with this Miami team. And I kept asking myself, are you nervous because that's Miami and you hate them? And your expectation is that this game is really important for Mike Norvell, for this team, and your expectation is that you're going to win it? So you're just reluctant to say what the film tells you to say, what the, what the, what the games, the evidence from the games tell you to say? And I concluded that perhaps I was. That, that uneasy feeling in my gut has more to do with the fact that I hate this team Rivalry games are weird. Sometimes they can be extremely interesting. That's the classic cliche, throw the record books out the window and all that stuff. I, I get it. But, man, I don't think that we're going to go down there lacking focus. I don't think we're going to go down there and not be prepared to play a football game. They play pretty well on the road, Florida State, and in pockets they have. They have yet to put together a complete game like i guess the lsu game only we say that because of the last quarter but I, that matter like, that, and fabian love it didn't play between lsu and georgia tech because of that quarter yeah so that matters it does we played well late on the road against louisville though when we had to have right. it north carolina and, and last year. year yeah i mean we've had I, I think he'll have him prepared to play i really do i do as well but i think what we're dancing around here is something that it's the quiet part out loud even though we believe that this is the right coach for this program and this time, this month helps dictate whether or not he is. Yeah. And does he tighten up? You know, do we, are we, is this actually about the coaching staff tightening up in situations or not? A game like this will help you determine if that's true. And what's the only way that you're in a dogfight outside of torrential rain? The 25% chance is it's torrential rain and you've got. You know, seven oh, well, fumbles either way, and they pick up four of them. All bets whatever. are off if the weather introduces right. itself in this game other in than, a way that is deleterious. Yes. Other than those crazy scenarios, it's about coaching. It's the only way this game's close. It's the only way. If you don't have them coached up and prepared and dialed in the way that they need to be, how is it that it could be? Because my. Is Miami going to get to the 30s in this game? I don't think they are. Do you? No. Okay. Well, what evidence so, would there be that they can get into the, thir in, I agree. Into the 30s? There's, okay. there's no evidence. So let's say it's 20 to 20 in the fourth quarter. Why? Oh. Why would that be? Didn't What's execute the most in the red zone, missed some field goals, put the ball on the ground, allowed them to hang around. Sure. And at some point, you've got to point to the sideline on that. So that's the nerves well, here. I don't think they're going to do it either. I think they're well coached. But I'm. what well, is the most rational explanation for if it's not? And I, I know that's shock jockey kind of sounding stuff, but it's true. That's where my nerves come from is, come on, guys, cash in. Because yes, this because is of critical for you. It's important. I, we're going to have a large discussion, a, a big picture discussion at the end of the year, regardless if they win all the games, they lose two that they shouldn't, whatever it is, right? I know that'll shape the conversation some. I'm prepared to have the conversation right now. I believe, Tom, that, well, I, I think there should be some changes made on this staff. I think the offense is pretty well coached. I like Mike. I think the program is moving in the right direction. It's going to be important that they play well in recruiting in particular because they don't have rock stars in the world of recruiting. Right. You need the wins to you help need, bolster you, your you case. Need, you need the wins. Yeah. You need the wins. They don't have rock stars out there on the recruiting trail. So you got to win games. The, the, the play on the field will help dictate whose eyes are open to your climb and success. Uh, so, you know, this game really matters. Well, and it's, yeah. I, I see Briley's comment and he hits at it. If, if, if Coach Norvell is the right guy for the program, then you've got nothing to fear. In theory, yes. And I think he's the right guy. Oh, but, but I want to. But, but hold on. Coaching. Head coaches are just one coach. They are the head coach, but they are just one coach. This is also the guy who designs the game plan with Alex Atkins and, and calls the plays. And I don't, I'm not worried about our offense. You're not. I'm not worried about our offense. In any form or fashion. No, I'm not worried about our offense. I think we're heading in the right direction. 
we'll get better players in here and we'll continue to well, climb long term. But I mean, again, situationally, that could short circuit what you want to do long term. Nope, if nope. You continue. I think the offensive line's better next year, which means we'll be better in the red zone. I think we're moving in the right direction. You got to get you a tight end in here. You know, still don't have one, but yeah, I mean, maybe you, maybe, maybe Powers will be good. Yeah, I don't know. He's not yet. He's not ready yet. So we haven't seen him. But I, I got no fears about where we're headed offensively. I feel very good about it. So. I like Mike and I, I like that Mike can make decisions about coaches and I like that he'll have to assess this and, and do just that. Um, but that does just because you like Mike doesn't mean you, you can't say that there are areas of this team that don't concern you. There are, there continue to be. Um, I'm, yeah, that's all I'm saying. I, 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 and again, we'll have this discussion. I'll lay it bare where my fears are, my thoughts and my hopes and, and all the stuff in between. I, but right now, it is important that they go win some football games, and I think they're going to. Remember, we came in here right after Clemson, and I really didn't even care to talk about the Clemson game because I knew how important these five games were going to be. I knew we were going to come out and destroy Georgia Tech, and we did. And now I think we're going to go down there and beat Miami. I'm looking at this from a positive standpoint, not a negative standpoint. I understand there's an underlying theme there that I have some concerns about areas of this staff. That's fine. I still think they're good enough and coached well enough especially in certain segment groups, to go win a lot of football games, like all of the remaining ones. And if you do that, it does two things. It opens more recruits' eyes to where you're headed, and maybe you get keen interest from better players that can overcome some things that maybe in areas that you're lacking. And then the other thing about it is it also confirms that Mike isn't going anywhere. And that's important if you do want to make changes. I don't know if he does or doesn't. But let's say he does want to make changes. All coaches have to evaluate their staff all the time. Self-scouting is huge. Understanding where you're strong, where you're weak, and shoring those areas of weakness up is vitally important to an organization. And very few organizations just arrive ready-made. So I get it's a process, and he's going to have to sit back and be like, you know, I like Larry. He's a great guy, but we could probably do better than Larry. And now that people know after I went nine and three, I'm not going anywhere. Maybe I can reach out to Tom over there at such and such. I've always liked the way he coaches and recruits. I'll call him. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it's not just about the kids saying yes. Yes. It's about coaching prospects saying yes, because he has the track record of getting guys in good, or sending them off to good positions, getting them promoted. Kenny Dillingham is the latest in the line of Coaches that Mike Norvell has worked with that have done pretty good for themselves after they work Very, with yeah. Mike Norvell, but they need to see the stability in order to yeah, take the Yeah, if you're a coach right now and you have competing job offers, and one of them, you're a coordinator, let's say, and one of them's from Florida State, and one of them's from, well, we just saw this play out, by the way. One of them was at Penn State, one of them was at Florida State. They went, uh, yeah, you know what? I'm not so sure Florida State's stable. I'll take the Penn State job. Yeah, the thing I'd say is I, I'm calling for it, too. My prediction was a wide margin of victory as well. But I'm just saying that if you need the wins, what is the thing that is most likely to short circuit your ability to get the wins the over the next? I I think it's situational offense. Mm. Well, we disagree I think on that. I think it's threes and not sevens that okay. put you in a position to where you lose twenty four to twenty one or twenty seven to twenty four. If the final score of this game is twenty four to twenty one and Miami wins, I'm not blaming the defense for that. Right. I don't. I don't think that's how Miami would win this game. But maybe you're right. We'll watch the game and, and have the discussion. Then. I don't think it's going to happen either, though. It's just, um, this is if you're. If you're managing against the worst case scenario, or well, you know, what? But, but, but okay, so big picture here, you can have red zone issues that have nothing to do with cutesiness, that have nothing to do with Mike running a jet sweep, which he needs to stop doing. Sure, but it could have everything to do with the fact that you're not good enough, tough. Your tight ends don't block anybody, so it's awfully hard in a condensed field with numbers. Being they wanted a to go jumbo early this year, yeah, and I think they wanted to with defensive tackles as well, but they're banged up there too. They want it. They want to play man's football. They do want to do that. Their their identity is the run. I just don't. They want just the, don't have the personnel in certain spots. I just don't want the red zone to hinder the greater thing here. I don't want that to be the battle you lose that short circuits the whole war. But 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 that is a, a an area and it already of, has done it. right. But that's an area of weakness that is sometimes the problem of the head coach being cute and sometimes a lack of personnel. And those are two very different arguments. I think he's learned his lesson. I would hope by now that he's learned his lesson. I will bet you that red zone this weekend is very different, at least in play calls. I don't know what the results will be. I can't yeah. predict that. The play calling will be different because I think they will incorporate Jordan Travis running the football in the red zone. I agree. And, and this type of game is one you circle in which you need him to be a part of the game plan. 
I mean, not, not just there, but 20 to 20. His legs have to keep Miami off balance. And if they do, that creates everything. All it's Every week that's true, but there's some weeks you need it and some weeks you don't. They said last weekend they don't need it. They were right. They don't need Jordan to run. Against Boston College, he had one run, and he chose to do it. That wasn't a called run. I right, think that was a right, scramble. Right, right. They said, we don't need it tonight, and they were right. Yeah, and I think they'll need it here, and I think you they'll need, need it, it against Florida. I think they'll need it against Syracuse. I think in every game not named Louisiana, they're, they're going to run him in these situations. Not to overblow the cutesy thing, but here's the problem with it, is you run that on second down, that's one fewer shot you got. Right, and so right. it takes you out of a rhythm, and I think our backup quarterback in one situation earlier this year bailed us out of having this conversation in that 4-0 start. Because if it wasn't for Tate hitting Johnny in the back corner of the end zone on a third down, mm -hmm. oh yeah, who yeah. knows if we were having this talk earlier in the year. I think that masked the issue because you had the Wyatt Rector play, you had another end around to Michael Pittman inside oh, the five, no, no, he, and you, you cleaned it up by a player making a play and a backup making a starter's throw. But remember, they recognized in certain areas that they could put one day at fullback and just jam it up in there and give it a go. They've done it twice, and it's worked twice. And I would continue to do it. Yeah, I would. I personally, Lundy as the lead back. Come on now, Freddie Stevenson too. I would effort to old school this thing in the eye and 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 give Jordan the option. I might move him outside the tackle and let him run pass option there, a little play action. If not, give it to the fullback or give it to the tailback. You know, I was talking with Trey Jones, the golf coach at Florida State. He he brought something up the other day, and we were talking about it. it was kind of funny. He knows how mad I get when I see any offense, not just ours, in the shotgun at the three-yard line or the two-yard line dri drives me nuts. And, and Unless I, it's the cat. You're okay with the wildcat. I'm cat. okay with the wildcat because yeah. that's a numbers thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I, there's power out of that. So I, I I can handle that. But we were talking about it. He goes, you, remember, you know, remember the highlight reels we used to watch in the 80s and early 90s would always have that, that Walter Payton jump. It would always be down on the goal line, Walter Payton going airborne over the line in, in scoring. I said, yeah, but it wasn't just Walter Payton. And I Nate, we went sat there and we rattled off all of these – Famous running backs. Marcus Allen did it all the time back in the day. I mean, you go on. Emmitt Smith, Emmett Smith do, did it in the do, 90s. He's doing the Cowboys, right? Yeah. yeah. You go, so he's got, they, why? Because they're seven yards back. They could charge it in and it's up in the air. You got guys cutting. You go up. Every now and then it made for a great collision and a big, big sequence. But a lot of times the guys almost went in untouched, just dove into the summer. So he said, You never see it anymore. I said, How is it possible to see it if they're in the shotgun? You can't do it if you're in the shotgun. Get the hell out of the shotgun. Stop doing that. Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Thank you for calling the Medicare Help Desk. How can we help you? Can you help me choose the right coverage for myself and my wife? We sure can. We can help you choose from Medicare supplements, Medicare Advantage, or standalone prescription drug plans from over 30 different insurance carriers. How much does it cost? We have a fixed income and can't afford extra expenses. At the Medicare Help Desk, the consultation is completely free. We are here to help. Thank you, Medicare Help Desk. Hi, this is Justin Colvin, founder of the Medicare Help Desk. In my 17 years of experience, I routinely speak to seniors who are overwhelmed by the multitude of coverage options available to them. That's why I created the Medicare Help Desk, a place for you to get clear answers to all your questions and make sense of all the confusion. I've helped thousands of clients, and I live right here in Tallahassee with my family. I am active in my church and wish to help and serve my community. If you need help navigating the Medicare landscape, I'm easy to find. Just visit the MedicareHelpDesk.com. That's the MedicareHelpDesk.com. Hey, this is Greg Tish. Here's something you might know about me. I, I don't drink coffee. I have never had a cup of coffee in my life. Well, that is until now. So why change now? Well, it's because my dear friend at Grassroots Coffee reached out to me after hearing me say that and insisted that I give his product a try. I've been making a huge mistake. The world of coffee is fascinating. I always thought coffee is coffee, you know? It, it, well, it, no, it's not. I have tried their coffee and it is fantastic. Now, I've got a fascination with learning more about the best coffee in our area. Grassroots Coffee is locally roasted, locally owned, and locally loved. You can find whole bean grassroots coffee on the local aisle at Publix, also in Whole Foods. But the best way to get this black gold is to order it online. They literally grind the fresh roasted beans to your preferred level, bag it, write the date on it by hand so you know the exact day your coffee was roasted. It doesn't get any more fresh than that. Order yours now. Just go to grassrootscoffee.com and choose the coffee you want and how you want it and join me. Let's step up our coffee game together and also support a great local business.
Imagine for a moment that you are completely weightless with zero gravity. All of your worries and stress melt away. Your mind stops racing and you fall into a profound state of pure relaxation. This is available to you right now at Tallulah Delta 8 Plus Floating in Railroad Square for just 50 bucks. These state-of-the-art floating pods are unlike anything else you've ever experienced. And while you're there, you can shop for some of the latest and greatest CBD and Delta 8 products on the market. Natural pain management, stress relief, and better sleep are all at your fingertips at Tallulah. Tell them Jeff Cameron sent you and thank me later. Are you prepared for more severe food shortages? It's likely that over the next year, serious food shortages will plague us. American farmers are dealing with insane diesel fuel prices and fertilizer shortages, which will lower crop yields. And that means your family's favorite foods will soon be in short supply while fetching sky-high prices. Inflation is the new normal, folks. It's time to act before things get even worse. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com without delay. You'll find Ready Hour Emergency Food Kits from My Patriot Supply that last up to 25 years in storage. Each kit provides over 2,000 calories a day to keep your energy up. Order your emergency food kits today by going to MyPatriotSupply.com. Your food ships fast and arrives in unmarked boxes. Listen, there are ways to beat food shortages. When you're ready for real preparedness, make sure to look for Ready Hour Foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com right now. MyPatriotSupply.com. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk Would have been served best by yours truly had I used that last segment for solving the future, which is me saying, get out of the shotgun. It ISF is a group that is very collaborative with state government agencies, and they'll go in there and they work with them and they do all those things that, as we've talked about before, and we like to make this segment collaborative in that same way, uh, where they, they make things more efficient get technology to work better and, and do those things. But also, Tom, you know, I think that in this case, we would not have had to collaborate. I could just say to them, get out of the shotgun. I, I don't care what you want to do. Get out of the shotgun. The good thing is if you wish to solve for the future. Yes, like our friends at ISF. Right. If you have a plan to solve something, you've got short-term steps to be taken and long-term steps. Right. So you could always solve for this weekend rather than the next three years or mm, somewhere in between. I like that. And you know how you solve for the future, Tom? My Patriot Supply. <laughs> we're all Wait a minute. We're what? all gonna die. We're all there's no food anywhere. You can't believe it. Only you card carrying Americans have a chance if you stock up on our my Patriot Supply now. That's like our guy in Watchmen who uh the tv series <laughs> yeah who has you know the security system yeah and yeah it was all time great yeah. every time i hear that commercial i crack up laughing i was like or uh christopher walken in that terrible movie with brendan fraser which you could say about most movies with brendan fraser yeah almost all of them, but yeah. that you know they're they're locked away in the mm. bomb shelter for mm. 30 years yeah he's got all the vacuum food <laughs> oh my god that's so good uh okay so solving for the future of this weekend instead of uh, instead of long-term solutions in the red zone? I think we gave the answer in the red zone, which does solve for this yeah. weekend's future. It, it does. Here's Well, here's one tough question. You could reject it. You could say, out of hand, no. How about the leading rusher this weekend? Trayshawn Ward should be back in the fold. 
Mike Norvell said, barring something negative happening today or tomorrow in their practice or walkthrough, the Trey Sean's mm. going to be back in the rotation. Oh, man, I'm really excited about that, too. He's uh, I, Listen, I love Benson. I really do. I think he gives you a different element at that position. But, man, he will have a tendency to just fall on a whole lot of nothing. Like, just why did you fall down there? What What uh, just happened? You know, if he decides not to cut back and just run to the end zone straight away against Clemson, who knows how that game turns out? Remember that play? Yeah, he also just got tackled by a guy's finger, and it's weird to be that mm -hmm. big, that strong, that tough, but that susceptible to just falling down because the turf monster gets you or whatever. I don't know if that's a weight distribution thing. He's lean. Uh, I, mean, I, I don't know. It's I'm sure they'll trust Toafili again this weekend, but, you know, you just need to make sure that you don't put the ball on the deck. That's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very, very, very important, though. It's one thing to – I'd like you not to fumble the football. The wildcat snap is one thing. The other one, you know, you just that's two in a game. So let's not do that. Does that affect the way that they distribute the football between the three might, backs? Might. Uh who do you like? I do uh, Trey Sean. Are you asking about the leading rusher? Mm -hmm. Trey Sean. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Uh I'm very excited about uh him being back because I think I he's a different type of runner and he's more apt to, as you say, hit your head on the goalpost than any of the other guys. Uh, he's he's a guy that can make a guy miss in in tight quarters on the line of scrimmage and then... Yeah, yeah. What I I would certainly agree that he's more likely to get you a 20-yard chunk than anybody else. And he will make the correct decision mm -hmm. about where to go, mm -hmm. where the he can read the linebackers quickly. Benson's got good vision, but it comes with patience. Treshawn has got good vision. If you've got less than a tenth of a second to make a decision... Treshawn is so good at that. He is. And, you know, I, I do like that to to compliment Toa Feely here for a second, even though he's put the ball on the ground. All right. There uh, you go. Uh, <laughs> you should. He's been really solid the last month. Yeah, except for the fumbles. Uh, but, but I love him as a receiver. So I just like that he's basically a wide receiver. I mean, you, you can straight up line him out wide like that and just make him a receiver. Isn't it nice that the wheel is back now, too? Oh, yeah. With both he and Ja'Kai? We run that play well. The wheel is back. Yeah, we run that play well. I'd love to see that go for a touch. You know, the fun part about the wheel, and especially the way we run it, and we've run it in big moments and had huge success in big games, including this one last year. When you when you watch them, when you watch that play, it's just the nature of the play. It gives you, if you're in the stands or on high or you have a, a zoomed out view, you just, it's so anticipatory. You can see it coming. You're like, oh, we got him. We got him. And you realize that the linebacker is sucked up or the safety is sucked up. You're like, oh, they got it. Yeah. And then the first thing you do is your eyes go from seeing that to back to the line of scrimmage. Are they holding up? Because if the answer is yes, this should be a touchdown. Then you go back to the quarterback. You're like, don't miss the throw. Don't miss the throw. And then you see the throw, and you're trying to gauge the trajectory. Is he going to run under that? Does he have to stop? Is that too far? And as it's – oh, it's like slow motion. I freaking love it. It is football's version of the breakaway in hockey where you can see that somebody is breaking open yeah, or like, there's a turnover at the blue him. line yeah. and your guy's cheating. Yeah. And you go, oh, make the pass. Make the pa yeah. All right. Then you made the pass, and so you're out of your chair, and you go, all right, now score because there's a goalie yeah, still there. Yeah, there's still a guy right, there. Right, so yeah. Like, all yeah. right. But it's just this quiet moment where everybody knows oh, that yeah. you're beaten. Mm -hmm. You're beaten in this situation. Yeah. But will you get bailed out in football's case by a bad throw or a drop a pass? A drop pass. Uh, safety comes over, makes a heroic play, say Notre Dame. Oh, my goodness. Good God, that kid. That play by Jordan was really good. Wow. I'll, I'll, I will always defend that play. That kid just makes – well, that's why he's a first-round pick. But that's the whole thing about – you know, we haven't talked a ton about Miami secondary. They've had their low moments. They have. Lack of communication from the outside corner yes, to safety yes. and passing it, off. It's almost like a mirror at times. And that's where the wheel would, you know, kind of come into play here. If you see the safety sag a little bit, you go, oh, if he's even. If Ja'Kai is even, he's more than leaving. Same thing with Toa Fila. There you go, ISF. We are straight up solving for the future with the wheel. <laughs> it's the wheel. Like, when when state agencies and governments they they call ISF they're like look we have this vision we have this dream we want to make this happen and we know that you can make us far more efficient you understand how to work with local government and processes and all that what what do you think we should do ISF in this case would go here's a wheel there you got it. here's a wheel that is also a very corporate efficiency kind of symbol too mm -hmm. isn't it mm -hmm. it's not just the cog no we've got a wheel we've here. got an actual wheel check out this wheel 
there's a lot of tread on this tire. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. That's great. Jeff Cameron show. That was solving for the future. Our friends at ISF 93.3 Real Talk Radio War Chant TV. Your local news now. Leon County government has announced that there will be closures and service changes for both election and veterans days. Leon County offices, libraries, community centers, and animal control will be closed for normal operations both November 8th and 11th. County facilities that will be used as polling places will be open November 8th for voting purposes from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Leon County solid waste will close at 5 p.m. November 10th and reopen on the 12th. Residential waste collection routes will be delayed one day for citizens whose normal pickup day is during the holiday. A school resource officer allegedly influenced a witness. Corporal Raina Butler, who worked for the Donaldsonville Police Department but lives in Colquitt, approached her neighbor and questioned him about providing a statement against her brother. Butler said she saw his name listed in relation to her brother's case and that she'd get his probation revoked for being a witness. That conversation was then reported. Butler has been charged with felony influencing a witness and is suspended without pay. This is Rachel Lene with your World Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frobley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. A blend of clouds and sun this afternoon with daytime highs approaching 83. Winds out of the northeast, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, lows level off around 57. Ample sunshine expected tomorrow. Daytime highs approaching 82. Dry with temperatures above average Saturday and Sunday and highs in the mid-80s. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 84. Hey, no fans, our partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF solving the future. Hey, what's happening, Jeff? It is always good to see you, Eddie. Had a long day, my man. I was thinking about it. Gordo's was the place to uh, ease the pain, you know? You're frustrated with your job. Your aggravated life's beating you down. Maybe your wife's speaking. <laughs> Gotta get yeah. out the door. You know what? Here at Gordo's, man, we welcome everybody. Disgruntled wives, disgruntled husbands, kids running away from home. We'll even give that kid a job. Send them our way. Go make some money and eat delicious food at Gordo's. It's perfect. And have a damn good time doing it. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Hey, Matt. Yes, Greg. You know all the different ways that you can listen to Real Talk 93.3? There are several. So we've got realtalk93.com. You can go back and listen to all of our shows in the podcast section. That's right. You can also listen on our app as well. Search Real Talk 93.3 and look for the red microphone mm -hmm. and download our app. Never go anywhere without us. And, of course, you can always listen right on the radio. Well, they are listening. Are they? If they're hearing this commercial, then they're listening. That's true. I hadn't thought about that. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jammin Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness, two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. Redemption Thursday wagers and hour one that we presented to you. And now we'll do an hour two really quickly. Thanks to our friends at Metro Deli in Tallahassee. I don't see why not. Remember next Saturday. Free 20, beer, right? 20th anniversary free beer prize. Ball supplies last for the free beer. Starts at 11 a.m. downtown Tallahassee Metro Deli. Prizes, games. They'll have a live band as well going from 11 to 4. And that's plenty of time before the kickoff next week. Isn't that great? 8 p.m. against Syracuse on ACC Network. So go pregame. Oh, just make it 11 p.m., guys. Whatever. Get your pregame on at Metro Deli. Yeah. Florida State minus 7.5. I laid it. Get you some, Miami. Alabama minus 13.5 against LSU. The dream is over. LSU goes from being number 10, according to the committee, which is already absurd, to out of the top 25. Liberty plus 14 against Arkansas. <laughs> Hugh Freeze wants a SEC job. 
UGA minus seven and a half against Tennessee. Tulane minus seven and a half against Tulsa. North Carolina minus seven against UVA. TCU minus eight against Texas Tech. App State minus three. There it is. Uh, App State minus three against Coastal Carolina. Boise State minus seven and a half against BYU. And finally, Clemson minus three and a half against Notre Dame. I'm, I'm going against the trend right now with that Clemson pick. A lot of people feel like Clemson's on the verge of being beaten because they are fallible. Well, they are fallible, and they are not an elite team currently. But uh, Notre Dame's strength is running the football, not throwing the football. I think Clemson will commit to trying to stop that. And if they are successful, then I think it's a long day for Notre Dame. But I'll tell you what, early in the game, if Notre Dame can run the ball, uh, then you know what? I'm going to lose that bet. <laughs> I'm going to lose that bet. That's why I'm assuming that one's not on the card. I would assume. Am I, am I, I right? I'm Ooh, wrestling with okay. it. I'm wrestling with it a little bit. Um, do you believe Clemson is well coached enough that you feel certain that they can't be run on? That would be the question I would ask before. Yeah, they you- ought not be run on uh, because again, I don't think you have to respect Notre Dame's passing game. So I mean, this should be, you don't have to be a Mensa on this one to figure out, like, guys, we, we got to stop the run. That's what they want to do. They're top 20 in every run metric Notre Dame is blocking-wise. All of those analytics tell you, because I had to preview them last week when I picked them for the sports book, and I everything I read about Notre Dame, and I was right to think, you know what, they're going to go run against Syracuse's defense, and they did. But I don't think this is the same thing. I, I think that Clemson can say, no, 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 not today. We're going to have eight in here. You're not running. Because I don't think you can beat us out on the edges, throwing the football. Now, if they don't do that and they lose, good, good. That's fine with me. I'd rather Notre Dame win the game. Win, win. Yeah. I, I don't care. I'll lose the bet. If it exposes Clemson's downward fall further, great. Great. I would I would like that. I would, I'd be happy about that. Um, and so we'll see. Feeling good about these games. I felt great last week, and I actually feel like I deserved a better outcome. I went 6-3-1, and one, but I, I feel like – I feel pretty good this week. We'll see if we can make it two weeks in a row, please. Two weeks in a row, wouldn't that be nice? I agree. Because I think I'm going to take a couple of these suggestions. <laughs> so let's hope that this is a good week. I think that Tom is in a desperate state. He's like, you know what? All right. I'm just going to take the redemption Thursday picks. Well, I'm mad at myself because I usually I got lost in the throes of football season this year, but I usually have NHL futures that also help uh, fortify. I'm quite fortify good at the those. ranks. Yeah, I'm yeah, quite yeah. good at those. And uh, the season's already started, and a lot of my surprise things are happening. At least you could the have first done it. You could have done it. Eighth of the season, and, and you I, love it. Why didn't you do it? Uh, I forgot. What well, the NHL was not a high priority because we're doing a lot of things. Florida State was winning football games at the time. We were four and zero, oh, and now we're five and three. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But we were four and zero. Oh, and it was three straight top 15 opponents in the time that the puck was dropping on the NHL season. And I failed. New Jersey, for example, would have been an over for me, an easy over. I saw what they were doing at the end of the year. And look at them. They're in first place in their division, seven mm-hmm. and three. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that make you mad? It does. Very much so. Um, yeah, it's funny. I, I, when you, you got to almost have the discipline. Like if you're going to do something like that, for especially for futures, any futures, like you got to say, you know what? On Wednesday, I'm going to sit down yep, yep, and I'm yep. going to jot out all the things that I think about what's going to happen in these divisions. And, 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 and then, you know what? Then I'm going to send off to my guy, my picks, and we're going to get it done. It's going to be these three hours or this two, this two hour window. But it's a really big game against wake. We got to break down the wake game. No. You do your futures. You sit down. You just get up an hour earlier, Tom, and you get those futures in. There's nothing, by the way, I really take great pleasure in uh, when I when I make my bets illegally as opposed to the legal ones that I make. Whenever I'm betting illegally, I get great joy out of texting the person that I'm betting illegally with at five something in the morning. There's some real dedication to sending in a, a, a wager at 537 a.m. Like I, I somewhere in me, I can picture him smiling as he's making coffee. Like my man, he's got his priorities straight. Yeah, on a Wednesday. <laughs> I, I would imagine that if somebody is conducting in that business with you, yeah, in in the legal manner, yeah, that they're already probably up. Yes, because that would be the time that they make sure that the ledger is clean. Yeah, got to make sure it's all up to date. And I like that. 
I like that. I just like, I feel like it makes his day too, in a weird way. He's like smiling, like bzz, bzz, the phone, like who is texting me at 534? Oh, Jeff's got six wagers in. <laughs> That's great. It's just hilarious. Like you could start a movie that way. You should send uh, little gifs with it too. Little gifs? Yeah. Like a little wave. <laughs> Hello. Do you think, I mean, we didn't talk about it today. There's a lot we haven't talked about in football season. It's hard. Like, for example, I'd love to just point out the very obvious situation uh, with, with like, let's say, the Kyrie Irving situation in Brooklyn. Like, that doesn't take much to solve. I told my son this today. Now, obviously, beyond the ridiculous anti-Semitic movie that he tweeted out uh, the title for and all that, it, it, besides all that, that's just self-explanatory. I don't have to talk to anybody about that. They understand how foolish that is and all these debunked tropes and all, all that stuff, right? If you have an employee, any employee, anywhere, okay, and they don't want to go to work and they don't show up for work, what are we doing here? This has been going on for two years. Like Simmons, for example, we're just not, we're not going to go to work. Well, you have to go to work. I'm paying you. You got you got to work. You got to play. You know, what is it you say you do here? I've never seen anything like it. It goes on these days. It's a star driven league. Simmons isn't a star. Just tell him to go home. We're done here. We're done. You can't play. You suck. You don't. Goodbye. Why do we have you have hour long debates on ESPN about these things? I'm like he doesn't show up for work. What are we talking about? This is simple. This isn't, well, if he gets it, no, it's two years. What are we doing? This is all common sense stuff. If my man doesn't show up for work, he's got to go. We're done. I don't know who signs anybody in any walk of life to a contract that says, I'm going to pay you handsomely to just do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> that's, that's not how that works. You, you have responsibilities. You want the money? Then you got to come play. If you don't want the money, fine. Go stare at the moon. Think about Zen and Buddha. Do whatever you want to do. But if you want the money, you got to show up for work. Just don't fall off the edge of the earth when you get to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, that came up and it made me laugh. I'm just like, oh, my God. And this, there's just so much obvious stuff there. But then the other thing we didn't talk about was another football game. And that's Florida and Texas A&M. Two teams struggling. Hey, that's a noon or two. You get to watch that I know. full spectacle. And you know what I think about, too? I think this is so – it's a fascinating game. I can't – I can't. I didn't put it in my picks because I cannot figure out where to go with that game. Yeah, you know what was interesting last week? I, I really haven't broken down a ton of Florida stuff. I watched them play Kentucky, and that was fun. And a couple of these games I've watched, they've just been fun watches. You know, you're popping a beer, having a conversation. You're not watching down to down because we're off or it's before the game or after our game, whatever right. the case may be. But last week after we got off the post game show and I'm watching Napier call and sequence some plays against Georgia, they're rallying in the game. And in one drive, they've got a third and eight. He calls a standard run and he punts. I'm thinking, what? Yeah. Yeah. I I'm mad about some of the fourth down things we do, but I get why we do them. We either don't have a kicker or you want to be aggressive. My man is in plus territory. I forget the exact, it might have been the third quarter, let's say. But it's third and eight. It's not a trick run, and they're not going for it on fourth. I, he's doing some weird things. My first real impression of just watching them play for play, I thought, what is he, what's his goal here? Yeah. Was his goal to get out of there, or was his goal to try and stage a rally? I, the, the oddity of, by the way, we were talking, so you and I during the break at one point, we were kind of talking about some of the other coaches and games i don't think for in the case of florida just using florida here let me say this i i don't think you could you'll you'll know much about napier and for that matter mario cristobal with miami through one year like we know because we've witnessed what it's like here when you take over a program and you're having to introduce new ways of doing things and you have a new philosophy and guys got to learn offenses and defenses and they got to accept you know the new way of doing things and all that you're going to have bumps in the road not everybody's going to be on the same page you got to weed some guys out you're going to have hiccups and problems there are going to be moments where you're made to look bad you got to talula some guys out thank yeah. you well done yeah. yeah there are things like that but i don't 
I, I'm hesitant these days to say I know what I need to know about oh. these guys in in after one disastrous year of of a beginning of a rebuild. I, I don't do that. Agree. That's that's not what I'm saying either. Yeah. You know, no, not I because know. I saw and here it was. They actually ended up going for it, but it was a third and seven near midfield. He calls a standard run and the formation where Georgia was playing it, it never. I mean, you check out of that, whatever you need to do. You don't run the play to gain a one. So it's fourth and six now. Right. Basically at midfield and the throw doesn't have a chance. And I, I loved Danielson sometimes makes me laugh. I know everybody hates him and he's pretty bad at times, but he made me laugh because on the third down call, he goes, mm, I don't love that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he really he says it yeah. was just mm, I, I don't love that. Yeah. You could tell he was trying to think of why would he do this? And nothing reasonable came to mind. But I digress. You know, by the way, did you see um, – so Florida, for example, runs – they love to – it'll be interesting to see what we do when we play them. They love to do this – it's just eye candy. Again, it's a deke. They, they'll they have a receiver go in motion and come out to the flats and just stand there while another one comes here. Now, they never intend to throw this guy in the flats. The intent right, right. is to throw the ball down the field. And the reason you know that they don't intend to throw it in the flats is because there's no blockers. So there's nobody there to help him if you do check down at all. And you look at the other complimentary routes that it's not meant to be thrown to him. And dude, Anthony Richardson will check down to that dude five out of five times when they run that play. I would never call it again because clearly my quarterback doesn't understand the concept. Like my man, under no circumstances do you throw it there. That's a good point. One thing I'd say about that check down type throw in our offense if Miami plays us the way that they've played other teams, it's wide open and you got to make the decision now. I hope we use it a lot this weekend. Yeah. Pass. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, we have intent on those. Oh, yeah, we got yeah, blockers. We, we got blockers. It's just hilarious to watch that. It's it's fascinating. Thank you, Tallulah. Appreciate you sponsoring that final segment. We didn't get the announcement of anything because I was prattling on about formations. Good job, Tom. Good job, Director Matthew. Be well, everybody. We'll talk to you next on a live Asians